Domino's. Order online and track your order. There's no finger pointing going on, um, and that's not the type of team we are. Um, so we just need to be harder on ourselves. Um, you know, the accountability thing is, uh, you know, making sure everybody's locked in each and every play. You know, it, I can't have eyes on everybody at every single time. Neither can the coaches. It's got to be within uh, the position groups um, and making sure everybody's, you know, in the right place at the right time. When we lost the game, that's not what we came here to do. Um, and if we don't correct these mistakes, we're going to be the, the if team or coulda, woulda, um, all, those, all those things. So it has to get corrected. The Cleveland Browns are one of the most talked about teams this summer, filled with talent on paper. Yet here we are, halfway through the regular season, and the Browns are now 2-5 and five after falling to the Patriots. Our quarterback, Dan Orlovsky, is here with us. Good morning. What's going on? What's up, man? I'm looking at you two, because uh, when we talked about the squad early on, <laughs> you guys came said, on. you know, potential Super Bowl contender. <laughs> You were riding that train. I thought mm. a push for them would be a playoff win. They'd have, oh. They had to win a playoff game for the season to be a push. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you thought there was a shot that they could go to a Super Bowl. I remember that. You can downplay sure. and defuse this. But that, this. That, is, that is a Super Bowl contender. Yeah. A playoff win makes you a contender. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. Have you officially jumped off the bandwagon, Max Kellerman? No, not officially. <laughs> Maybe unofficially I'm, I'm looking for the lifeboat. But look, I said you can also check tape. I could see them three and four, worst case scenario, two and five after seven games. Because when I looked at the schedule, first of all, whenever a team first comes together, especially when you take a pass protection like, like uh, Zeitler off the offensive line, that stuff takes a minute to gel. Plus, they had a kind of rough schedule early. I so I thought. Did you just say a minute? Yeah. Not, so I not, thought, not, well, not, well, not, look, not, look, not eight weeks. I thought three and four <laughs> was more likely or four and three, mm. but I could see two and five. Mm. But then a funny thing happens in their schedule. Mm. Now, they have to play well, obviously, but the Bron like if you're if the Broncos and the Bills are the tough opponents on your schedule, you've got a pretty good one. Then it's the Steelers, the Dolphins, the Steelers, the Bengals, the Cardinals, who you know are better than you figured they'd be, but are not world beaters. The Ravens is the tough draw. And then the Bengals again. It's a very easy schedule by NFL standards the rest of the way. And if you think that doesn't play a part in how a team performs, mm -hmm. look, as good as the Patriots are, no one comes close to them because other than the Bills, they haven't played anyone, including the Browns, who obviously don't have their act together yet. Mm -hmm. It plays an enormous part. Look, if you can win that division with nine games, which you might be able to with nine wins, they're going to have to reverse – this kind of two and five, go five and two over their next seven. But I think we will be having a very different conversation in a, if and when that happens. They obviously cannot lose both games, Broncos and Bills. They must win at least one, if not both, to remain it like even to have me on the bandwagon at all. Let me tell you something, man. You know, I listen to you here, and um, you know, it's I love how you try to get so slick and change the narrative. I am not trying to sit up there and say that let's ignore your strength of schedule or lack thereof. We all understand that the latter part of their schedule is relatively weak compared to the, uh, you know, the beginning of this season, the beginning of the schedule. But I remember you talking about their talent. I remember you talking about how gifted they were and how it really didn't matter when I sat up here and said, excuse me, they might not win the AFC. I said, I don't even have them winning the AFC North. They might not even make a wild card spot. And I got serious questions about the fact that you got a second-year quarterback and a first-year coach. It was you that raved about their relationship. It was you that raved about Baker Mayfield. Do I have it right, Molly? Are you ready for this? He's a baller. Who that remind you of? I think that was you. Now, Guilty. here we are. Here we are. Nerve. You're talking when are we, the Steelers. When are, when are we going to, listen, listen, listen. I know the Steelers have stunk up the joint. I conceded that weeks ago. I mean, you open the season, get shut up by 30. I got no defense for you. But they don't you. have their but starting the, quarterback. I don't do, no, no, excuse me. I said week one. Even when they did. Yeah. I said week one. They had been Roethlisberger that first yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Here's the deal. Freddie Kitchens is the wrong man for this job. Why don't we stop playing around? The man, listen, and, 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 and if Freddie Kitchens is watching... Listen, I don't want to be 
I don't want to dog him like everybody else is and act like like then he has no potential. What I'm saying is you go from a positional coach to an offensive coordinator to the head coach inside of a year where you got people in the NFL that have been waiting decades for this opportunity and this dude pulls it off in the year. Who, who do you have pictures on? Who do you know? How the hell did that happen? Okay? Yesterday what happens is 13 penalties, 13 penalties on the season, 70. You're going up against a team that got 46 on the year. You are averaging 10 penalties per game. False starts, offsides, timeouts being used because dudes are in the wrong position. And this includes Odell Beckham Jr. And you talking to me about their schedule? They, a legitimate argument can be made that the Cleveland Browns don't know how to play football. And I don't mean literally as a talent. I'm talking about as a team. A legitimate argument. Listen, you call games. You're doing a great job, by the way, doing that. Okay? Thank you. Thank okay? You. you play the game. You know the game. I ain't questioning your knowledge. I'll defer to you. I'm talking collectively as a unit, as a team. A legitimate argument can be made. They don't know how to play football. So you, you, when you talk to me about a schedule, I'm saying, wait a minute. Don't you first have to know how to play? Together as a team, don't you have to know the rules? Don't you have to know how to avoid false starts and all sides and all of this other? Don't you have to know encroachment? Don't you, that's right. Don't you have to know these things? Evidently, they don't. And that is the problem with the Cleveland Browns. You got a second-year quarterback and a rookie coach who had no business being there. And, oh, by the way, the only reason he was there is because the rookie quarterback wanted him in Baker Mayfield last year. And John Dorsey, who, who's otherwise, in terms of accumulated talent, has been impressive. But, my God, you're going to defer to Baker Mayfield. Yeah, interim coach Greg, Williams, pretty good too. Greg Williams still should have still been a damn head coach. That's the problem with the Cleveland Browns. Go ahead. Stephen A. is right about this football team. And I was the one leading the charge about the Browns in the offseason. Uh, it's a big problem if you can't admit when you were wrong. I was wrong about the Cleveland Browns. I was wrong about Baker Mayfield and Freddie Kitchens. That's just the reality because I'm off the bandwagon, and this is why. We go back – I go back to week one when we sat in here. We talked about the performance against the Tennessee Titans. We talked about two things that were the major theme of that football game, penalties and turnovers. Mm -hmm. Well, I sit here in week eight, and I'm talking about the same thing. Penalties and turnovers. So until you prove to me that you can fix those things, that you get those things rectified, I can't stay on your bandwagon anymore. I can't tout you and your talent anymore. I look at yesterday's game. You averaged more yards per play than the Patriots did. Yet you beat yourselves, and that's been the storyline every week for the Cleveland Browns. To your point, Stephen A., about knowing how to play football. The Cleveland Browns, and we talk about, man, they got to figure out how to, a way to win a football game. No. They got to figure out a way not to lose a football game because it's the same stuff that we've been talking about week after week with them is the penalties and the turnovers. You go to New England and you spot them 17. You do the one thing you can't do. Three turn, turn the football over on the three straight quarter. plays. Three turnovers. And that's why I would argue yesterday, play caller-wise, Freddie Kitchens was good. Play call-wise, Freddie Kitchens was good. Head coach-wise, he was bad. I look at one play that encapsulates the whole season. It's fourth quarter, about seven minutes to go. It's third and 11. They throw a pass to Odell Beckham. They run the punt team on there. And then in a matter of 10 seconds, Freddie Kitchens goes, ah, I don't want to punt. We have to go for it. And instead of calling a timeout and getting his offense back out there, takes a penalty on purpose. He's overwhelmed because in that moment, on third down, as a head coach, once you make your play call in, you are starting to have the conversation with your staff. What's our plan on fourth down? What are we doing if we don't get anything? Is this mandatory go for it on fourth down if we don't get any yards? And that play totally encapsulates to me the lack of preparation unprepared. Look, for this football I, team. I, I, and that's why I'm off. You're both making a lot of good points about it. That's why I'm looking for the lifeboat, but I'm giving it another week. I thought what I, this doesn't surprise me that stuff. Although maybe the let the deep this deep it into surprises the season, me that they're no this. better than they were week I'll one. I'll say this: the reason I still like them to make the playoffs, in spite of the fact I still mentioned Zeitler and the turnover and guys have to learn how to play together, rookie head coach, is they had so much talent. I thought it could be an eraser. But if you look at it, Odell Beckham has basically not gotten the ball all year. He has and, one and, TD catch on the season. Right, and Belichick, by the way, one? put Belichick one. one TD catch one. on the yeah. season week two against Belichick the Jets. double. 
long one. Belichick doubled him as everyone else did. You bracket him. You do things to, to take him out of it. Other guys got to make plays. But when the ball came to him, he dropped it. Yeah. Like, the talent has not been the eraser. And, and the difference between one or two games like that yeah. being two and five or three and four, four and mm -hmm. three is the whole difference. I would say to you that's being a bit excessive. The inclement weather did factor into the equation. Let's, and not only that, if you ain't accustomed to seeing the damn ball, and then the first time you see it is in pouring rain with Belichick's yeah. defense going up against you, errors are, about, are, are, are bound to happen. But in the end, what it comes down to is this. Freddie Kitchens had no business being named the head coach. He was named the head coach because of a relationship with the quarterback instead of what is best for the team. And yesterday they got exposed because the New England Patriots don't do that. As you would say, Belichick's all business. It ain't about relationships. It's about what gets the job done. Don Dorsey made a different decision than somebody like Belichick and Kraft would you ever good make. With and, that's the bottom and, line. With, and with McVay, are you as you say, Lafleur? Like you good with those guys because they pay dues as coordinators? No, 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 no. I'm not good with them, but I do think that Lafleur is in a different situation because look at the quarterback he has as a first year head coach compared to what other coaches have. I was right on Lafleur. I thought he'd be a good fit for the Packers. Can I take so that? Far, so yeah. Good. yeah. Can you I take that? that. Right. You that get one win for that, that, that doesn't mean he deserved it when your offense was 27th ranked. Right. Offense we got to leave it there. Dan sticking around. The Eagles fly north to Buffalo and come out with a huge win, but find out why you shouldn't buy the Philly special. The rest of the season. That's coming up next. I see your face, Dan. Do you disagree with that? Hmm.